Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me. Today, I continue my journey in reducing my anal retentiveness when it comes to crafting with another stream of consciousness build for this profane altar. Uses a Halloween skull prop that most of you terrain builders have probably used before, especially with the blood coming out of the eyes. Everyone's done it, now it's my turn. Also, I got to try out a really good clear two-part epoxy for water effects. Blood for the blood god. quick note on a fundamental design choice I had to make early on. Notice that the top of the plateau is barren. There's nothing up there. This really isn't the focus of this project. I wanted it empty so I can put down any sort of scatter terrain I want, run multiple types of encounters in D&D, fit in multiple settings in my war games, whatever. Having it empty lets me customize it in the future a bit. Really the crux of the project is down below where the actual shrine is. So if it seems like a missed opportunity or whatever, it's not. That was by design. Okay, let's get to the crafting bench. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. This prop skull is from the Halloween store and I've been saving it for a couple years now, so I'm gonna build something around it. I started with some one inch thick XPS foam from the Home Improvement store, cut out a decent sized slab and kinda drew on roughly where the steps were gonna go. I hot glued the skull in place and then painted on pure acetone to eat away the recess for what will become the blood pool. Then I started cutting away at the perimeter, slicing a few millimeters in and twisting the blade to break a small chunk out, doing this at varying angles all the way around. And from there I just started adding layers until it was level with the top of the skull. But it was right about here that I realized I might want to do some lighting, so just in case I went ahead and ran the electrical now, while the mountain was still open. I drilled through each eye socket, chopped away the back of the skull with a coping saw, and pulled two wires through each eye. I also cut a hole in the bottom of the feature. So here it is so far, all the other slabs added on, ready for electrical. For the steps, I carved halfway into the bottom layer like this to form the first step. And then cascading slabs of foam curving upwards like this. All the slabs are just attached to each other with hot glue. Instant bond, you get to move right along with the project. Then I took some cork and broke pieces to cover each step. This would introduce a little more interesting texture on the horizontal surfaces. Then I painted them with a healthy thick layer of white PVA glue. Cork is really fragile and doing this makes them much stronger. With that dry, it's time to prime the entire thing. So I mixed up Mod Podge and black paint, like 50-50 or something like that, and just slathered it all over. And once that's dry, sculpt a mold to make that plateau surface a little more interesting. Two parts dust, one part water, and then I just spread it all over the top, about an eighth inch thick, and left it overnight to dry. That done, I coated it with white PVA glue and flocked with pebbles and sand. Now this piece is obviously focused on playability, not really realism. The large amount of flat horizontal space doesn't look very natural, but I don't really care. This thing will add verticality for my miniatures, and it'll look plenty interesting enough. Technically, it still qualifies as a speed build. Excluding drying time, I think I only put like four hours of work into this thing. So once that was dry, I painted it up, and this was a bit of a saga. First, I base coated with my usual burnt umber, followed by a thin black wash, and then a dry brush with tan, and a dry brush with light gray. And I don't know, for this piece, I think the dark cliff faces and the dark top just kind of uh, meh. I like color. I like terrain to pop. I'm not so concerned about keeping miniatures as the star of the show. I like it all to be vibrant. But I don't know what to do about this right now, so I'm going to keep my momentum and get the electrical knocked out. Christmas lights. Took two red ones, liberated them from their chassis, soldered them up to the lead wires that I ran earlier, and secured them in the sockets with a bit of hot glue. 
Here's a quick functionality test with a 3 volt watch battery. Looks like it'll work. So I soldered these up in parallel to the battery with a switch in series. For a more in-depth explanation on circuit design and construction, check out one of my older videos. I'll put a card to it on the screen. For the cliff face, simple, overbrushed with dark gray. And then overbrushed with a light gray. Did this all over the sides and also those cork surfaces. I also base coated the skull with light gray since any sort of yellow family color tends to do a horrible job covering directly over black. And even with that, it took like three or four coats of this sandstone color to get a solid base coat on the skull. And yeah, this thing is so dusted out and so bland that it's like washing out the camera exposure. So maybe I can saturate the top by washing it with a really rich cinnamony type of brown. And that didn't really work. It kind of looks like a mess, but maybe it just needs to be dulled back down. So let's try another black wash. And I'm right back where I started. So forget it. I'm just going to rebase coat with a richer brown to begin with. But as it was drying, I could already see that it had become so clogged up with paint that the detail of the sand was already lost. So more white glue and a fresh layer of sand. Then a rich brown base coat to start with, followed by a dry brush with a honey sort of color. And a dry brush with khaki. And to tamp down the dusty sort of look, I decided to wash not with black, but with that burnt umber that I had very first tried to base coat with. And this gave me the nice, rich, differentiated look that I was chasing. Finally, two hours of work for five minutes of work. Next, I injected lots of hot glue into the eye sockets and let them drip down naturally. The hope here was that it would create something solid for the resin to cling to later on. Speaking of which, here we go. This is a two-part clear epoxy that I got for my birthday. Mix it up 50-50 and added a few drops of good red paint. You don't need much. It's surprising how saturated the mix gets with just a few drops. And I imagine a good pigment rich like dye would work even better. But anyway, here we go. I tipped the entire piece upwards and poured directly into the eye sockets, then quickly set the piece down to let gravity naturally do its job. But it didn't go quite as I hoped. It didn't trace along that hot glue that I had set up. And it proved to be thinner than I thought it would. However, I came back about 45 minutes later and it was already starting to cure to the point that I could use a popsicle stick and tease some of it from the pool up onto the blood tear flow and that worked great. This is a leftover Chaos Space Marine sprue and I saw all kinds of neat stuff on here. There's this eight pointed star, these curved bars with spikes and skulls, these hooks over here. Oh, and these spikes with skulls on them too. I primed them up and simply painted them with the same Vallejo brass that I used on my Black Legion army. With super glue, I tried out one of those curved things on the forehead and the star just below it. But then I thought of a better use for the curved thing, so I tore it off. And of course, that leaves three bad spots, so I covered those with red plastic gemstones. And then I thought, actually, why stop there? Why not a gem for each point in the star? So I went for it. I hung those skull spikes upside down from an overhanging slab and super glued those curved pieces to the steps to make sort of a railing. Those hooks I mentioned earlier, I hot glued one on each side of the skull. And here's some leftover chain from the Hellsphere project a few weeks ago. In that video, I actually primed and painted it, but in this case, it happens to exactly match the color of the brass that I'm using, so I'm just gonna use them as is. I hung a leftover Necron figure that I painted up in bone white and another random chaos bit from that leftover sprue. So first we'll take a look at this thing close up and then I'll show it to you in a couple of different contexts with a bunch of different scenes and miniatures. A little hard to see the glowing effect here in this particular lighting, but there it is, the final effect came out just like I had it in my mind's eye. 
I do think the eight crystals might have been a bit much. I think without those there, this whole thing would have tied together a little better. Something about it's just a little off, but whatever, it looks fine. And here is a setup, uh, assuming that the profane altar really does its duty and uh, summons Demogorgon or something like that. So I thought I'd give you a sneak peek because I will be painting Demogorgon in an upcoming video. So here's some goblins coming out of the cave and a close up look at our features here. Upside down skulls look pretty good. This uh, Necron, it, it's obviously not a skeleton up close, but from two feet away, you don't really notice. And then there's the skull with the eight pointed star. And then this is actually, uh, I think a zinch plaque, but anyways, like how these things came out as uh, like a railing, cruel looking railing. Each step is big enough for two standard one inch miniatures. And again, here's a sneak peek at the big guy. I attempted to paint him just like the box art, but we'll get into that in a future video. I was just getting ready to film this final flyover and I thought, oh, wait a sec, he would be a perfect way to showcase this terrain piece. And so I did. Oh, another thought I'm having as I'm sitting here recording this, if you were doing like a D&D &D session, there's room in there for miniatures in the blood pool. So you could do like a baptism in blood or some weird thing. If a character is going off the rails or gonna be, you know, converted, you could have a pretty dramatic scene there. Now I'll clear the scenery and set this up as a Warhammer 40K scene. Here's the Noctilith crown we did in the previous episode, and it fits on there nicely. Again, it's an altar and the plateau is to put whatever kind of features I want on there. Here's some Ultramarines facing off against Black Legion. Yeah, you know what I think it is, is the mixed media. Um, the gems aren't painted, they're just naturally glinting, um, and that just generally doesn't work together for some reason. In thinking about it, I've had that issue in previous builds. So that's a useful realization. Also, went real simple on my cliff faces here. Probably could have slowed down, put a little more effort into them. But I was just dying to get that skull in place and just decorate with evil stuff. Well, that was a fun one. And if this is somehow your first exposure to crafting for your tabletop games, you should know that I am not alone. Come find us on Facebook at the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Link in the video description below, plus a bunch of other resources for you. Uh, and if you liked this particular project today, here's two more that I think you'll like. So I am Wylock. Thanks for joining me. Make things and play games.